Come on, somebody. David, go for it, man. So the question was how to sustain it, right, basically? Personally, how to cultivate personally, it yeah. personally so in your life. So with me, I can only talk from experience. With me, once I hit that new levels in God, I, I didn't want to go back. So I, was, I got addicted. How many have ever been addicted? So people say, wow, how do you travel and have to have it every time, every week you're traveling around the world and America? I, they say, man, you must be so disciplined and... I, I, I can't take credit. I said, no, you don't understand. If I go one day without it, I feel like I'm going to die. So for me, it, it, it's like I can't breathe. Many times I tell my wife, honey, I, I got to go pray. I, I feel like I, I got to have that breath, that fresh. But you just prayed this morning. Yeah, but I didn't get enough. And it would be like midnight or one in the morning. I'll go outside. She should go to sleep or whatever. I'll go pray. Because it's like, so for me, it's like breathing. Does that make sense? It's like if I don't breathe, I die. So for me, it's like the oxygen when I started in my ministry, or when I started as a kid, you know, discipline myself, I used to read Larry Lee's prayer guide, okay? And remember that one, the one-hour prayer guide? That really helped me to stay on track. So I prayed every day, every day. Then I started getting visited by God, and then it was no longer discipline. It was a delight, and now it's an addiction. So, so does that make sense? So let's say I go a day without really, let's say you pray, but you don't really get in the presence. Like, oh, I had my prayer time, but God won't let me go to sleep. Like, I can't go to sleep at night. So I, I don't, I can't take credit that I'm so disciplined and I'm so, it, it's, and then if there's anything gets in the way, let's say you get hurt by someone or, or a sin issue under the blood immediately because you, you can't, anything can't hinder that relationship because that's the key to the glory. So, so also the difference with glory is, okay, you could have, like we talked about, you could have gifts and backslide and people fall into sin. What happens is they lose the intimacy with God, but they still have the power. So they, so they sustain themselves through the power. But glory is intimacy, and to have intimacy, there's holiness. So but when you're in the glory, you have to be in holiness. So I see a lot of ministries, sometimes they start it in the level of glory. Then they learn how to move in power, and then they keep moving in power, but they don't have the intimacy. The success of their ministry robbed their prayer time and intimacy, which eventually led them to fall. Because their inner glory starts decreasing. So you have two. You have the inner, and the stronger the inner, the stronger your outer ministry you can hold. So the bigger worldwide power, ministry, success, whatever, the, the more you have to have an inner. You can't be like, oh, I'm so blessed, and now I don't have time to pray as I used to. That's, that's dangerous. One of the presidents, I forget which one he said, he, he was so busy, U.S. president, and his advisor said, why are you praying even more? You're busier than ever. He goes, that's why, because I need God. So the more God uses you, the more you have to press in to sustain, to have wisdom. Does that make sense? So people are like, I'm so scared of falling. Well, it's not about falling. It's if you can't live without his presence, that will keep you. Does that make sense? But if you're living for the manifestations, the success, the favor, then, then that's where it can go off. Even though God wants to bless you, he wants to use you. But if that's your, like I could not preach for, sometimes I'll take off a month or take off the whole summer. Many times God will say, take off the whole summer. And I'm in heaven because I don't have to pray what I'm going to preach. I guess it's going to be with him. In fact, just this summer, I took off a lot of time just to be, because we're about to do some crazier, bigger stuff. So I pulled, I've been pulling back a lot this summer because I know I'm about to go really big. So the more you, you see what's coming, you pull back, you cancel some of the smaller stuff, and you just, just I'm just happy being God. And then you don't want to go, you don't really want to go back to preach. That's how you know you're there because you don't, it's, ministry is not your idol. Like I couldn't care, if I don't preach for six months, I'm fine as long as, as long as you just don't take this, take not that spirit from me. But a lot of people, their identity is based in their ministry. They're really so, it's so connected. They could not not preach for three months. They would literally feel like a total failure or something. So how many want to get set free from that? Amen. But ba basically, I'd say, ask God to make you addicted. H how do you sustain for you daily? Get addicted. God, I want to get to that point where I get so touched by a higher level of glory, almost like a drug where you can't go back to marijuana if you took cocaine or something. Yeah. And by the way, I've never <laughs> taken drugs, not even marijuana. So I'm not talking by experience, all right? Just an analogy. Once you taste it, the higher powers of the age to come, you can't go back to mediocre Christianity. Does that make sense? If you got, try to go back to mediocre, you'll probably backslide. If you've tasted a higher level in God and you try to go back to what you used to be, right. you'll probably backslide because right. you have to keep going for it. You can't go back. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. That's Tony, it. come home, man. Can you follow that? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Let's do an altar call right now. Yeah, Amen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, for me, I just stay hungry. And I just, I speak at revivals, but I also attend revivals. I go where the fire is. I'm not just always looking for the stage. I don't need to be the man of the hour. I don't need to, I just want to be in that room. And if there's something for me to capture and be caught with, 
you know what, I'll, that's what I want. And I, I'll, go to, I'll go to young evangelists, I'll go to old evangelists, I'll go to everyone far in between. If they're, if they're living it, whether known or unknown, I will go to them and ask for an impartation. You know, and, and so for me, it's, uh, I just refuse to believe my own news. You know, and, and at the end of the day, you know, there's always more. And, and so I'll go to, and I'll go to these places where people say, God's breaking out over there. And I'll, just, I'll just slip in and just, you know, try to get as much as I can. Another thing I do is I stay in community. You know, historically, revivalists are known to run alone and die alone. Reformers, one of the differences is reformers historically move in companies. And that's what Papa Che's been talking about. One of the ways that to transform culture is by networks. We're not created for ministry. We're not created for meetings. We're created for relationship. We're created for relational connectivity. And so I'll hang around guys like Jay and Matt and David and Jeremy, and we'll just, I'll just call them up and just say, hey, man, tell me what God's saying. Because how many of you know the more you talk about him, more, the more you see him? You know, and so I'll just get around my friends, and at the same time, when I'm struggling, I'll text Jeremy and be like, pray for me, man, there's some stuff I'm struggling with, you know, and just get really vulnerable about, vulnerable about that, because I'd rather bring things to the light rather than the enemy bring it to the light, you know, and, and so that's the way I just keep myself burning, and obviously in the word, you know, I'm a, I'm a word, but I love the word, you know, I love, I love the Gnosis, I love the epinosis. I, I, you know, I just, I love it all and far in between. And, and so I just kind of continue to stay in the word and, and just continue to dive deep. And like what Matt said, just continue to really look at the face of God. I do my best to just live before the face of God and stay in that place. And that's how I just continue burning amongst what others said. Isn't this good? Come on, put, the, put your hands together. This is good stuff. Wow. Amen. How has revival changed in the past five years, and what do you predict will happen in the next five to ten years? Go for it, Matt. Um, one of the things recently, we were in London at the end of last year, London at uh, Preethi's church, yeah, right here, uh, this great church, Capstone Church in London, England. It was with Jeremy and George and Banoff. And it was during that service that I began to smell a burning incense, like a fire incense in the room. And it was during that, that particular service that I had a vision of an angel standing at the altar, holding a censer in his hand, and out of it was coming this burning incense. So the Lord opened up my eyes to see in the spirit realm what was being released, and I could smell the burning fire in the room. I went from there. For the next month, every state, I came back to America, every state I went to, the room would become filled with a burning, fiery incense smell. And I began to really seek the Lord on this and say, what does this mean, God? Why do I keep smelling a burning, fiery incense in the room? And the Lord brought me to the book of Revelation where there was an angel standing before the altar in heaven holding a golden censer in his hand. Out of it was coming this burning fragrance, this burning incense, and it mingled with the incense from the prayers of the saints before the throne in heaven. And from that place, fire was taken from the altar, and the fire from the altar in heaven came down to the earth. And the Lord spoke to me that he is releasing a new baptism of fire upon the church. And I believe one of the things that is going to mark the move of God in this hour will be a new baptism of the fire of God. And with that, I mean, there's so many levels to this, but it was the incense of this angel commingling with the incense of the prayers of the saints. And I believe we're seeing a move of intercession. There's going to be a, 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 a powerful end time intercession. And what it's going to look like, it's going to be like a homesickness where, where the homesickness that God feels for his for his sons and daughters that are yet to be saved, God's going to put so much love in the heart of the church that we're going to be homesick for the lost the way God is homesick for the lost. And it's going to release this end time intercession where, where we're going to be so uh, homesick for them that from this move of intercession, God is going to answer those prayers. A baptism of fire is going to come upon the church 
And I also believe we're going to see a move of mass deliverance where we're going to see whole groups of people in a moment get totally delivered and set free from things that, that, you, could, that you would say they'll never be free from. But we're going to see a move of deliverance, a move of freedom, a move of the fire of God. And I believe this, with the fire of God, anything that doesn't look like Jesus, sound like Jesus, talk like Jesus, act like Jesus, God is going to burn it up until the only thing that's left is Jesus. Jesus in us. Jesus through us. And I really believe that this baptism of fire is coming. And when, and I love it, the spirit of burning in Isaiah chapter 4, it says that when God releases the spirit of burning from that place of the spirit of burning, then it says the glory will become a canopy over, and it's talking about Israel, the, the glory will become a canopy over all their assemblies, all their gathering places. And I believe that as we as the body of Christ invite this fire, this new baptism of fire into our lives, that God with that movement of fire and I'm talking I'm talking down to the deepest motives of our heart that the fire of God is going to sift through and refine and and what will be released will be a canopy a, a defense of the canopy of God's love and protection over the church where there will be an overshadowing of the glory of God over us to the point where there will be a habitation of the glory of God. And from this habitation of God's glory, get ready for harvest. I mean, just get ready for the harvest. So this is what I see, part of what I see coming with the fire of God, with intercession, uh, with the harvest, and with mass deliverance in our nation and around the world. Because there are some strongholds that only, only the anointing of God can demolish. And, and the Bible says that the anointing destroys the yoke. And that word destroy means to annihilate. So God doesn't want to just temporarily set people free. He wants to annihilate the yokes in their lives to the point of no return. Come on, say more, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jeremy, go for it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's interesting you said five years, right? The last five years and even the five years to come. Um, 2015, I was living across the street from here. Uh, you know, my wife and I were attending H Rock Church every Sunday as our home spot, and uh, you know, we were, we were itinerating all over the world. And I'll never forget one Sunday morning, uh, I was getting ready to come over and just be in the service. And I was on my couch, and the Holy Spirit said to me, "I want to show you something." And I went into an open vision, and I saw an angel named Promise come down. And there was a glory cloud that was swirling all around uh, this angel's head. I mean, this is like, a, you know, I was having like a Bob Jones kind of thing there. And, and the whole living room disappeared. And, and it was swirling around his head. And I'll never forget he had a name tag that said, hello, my name is Promise. And as I was looking at this angel, the Lord said to me, uh, he said to me, do you want to know what this angel is about? And I said, yes, Lord. And he said, uh, this angel is about the last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples. And here's what he spoke to them. He said, wait in Jerusalem until what? The promise of the Father comes. And, and, and the promise of the Father comes upon you. And he said this, you'll be my witnesses because you'll be endued with power from on high. And the Lord said this to me. He said, Jeremy, and, and I went into open vision of the United States of America. I saw the West Coast. I saw the East Coast. And I saw that God was releasing these angels on assignment to birth the promise of the Father, to release outpourings of the Spirit. Uh, I actually saw San Diego. I saw L.A. I saw all kinds of places up and down the West Coast. I saw them go all over to the East Coast, all across uh, the nation, and there were all these fires that were burning. And then I saw uh, fires light in the U.K., and I saw fires go all across Europe. And the Lord said to me that in this next five years, I'm going to prepare the church to, uh, to get them ready for one of the greatest harvests that the earth has ever seen. And he said the angelic realm is going to be released to begin to take the powers and the principalities out and to begin to break the strongholds because there is a promise of revival over America and there's a promise of revival that will go into the nations. And, uh, and, and what's funny about it is when fire and glory broke out in 2016, which was a year later, uh, it, you know, the Lord spoke nothing of that to us. Uh, you know, it, it, I didn't think there was a relation. There was nothing that happened. But at, about uh, the beginning of this year, the Lord told me, he said that... Uh, 
he said, now is the time that I'm going to begin to release a shaking. And everything that can be shaken will be shaken uh, and, until only the things of the kingdom remain. And it started out, uh, it started out in the, the natural. I'm telling you, the, the entertainment industry blew up. The, the, you know, the, the different movements where people started coming out about the corruption going on in government and the, the Me Too stuff. I mean, all these things. And then he said, the fire will hit the church in that way as well. And he said, but don't be alarmed by it when people have falls and things go on. He said, because it's actually on to the greatest harvest that America's ever seen. And, and, and the reason why is because the purity that you're talking about has to be in the church to begin to receive. And I believe what Papa Lou has been hosting and, and, and what they've been trumping with the, the call, with the sin, with all of these things has been actually a, a part of those angels of promise being released. And, and, and one of the things that I feel like in the next five years we're going to see is we're going to see revival and, and revival is going to go into uh, the workplace, it's going to the marketplace, it's going to go into schools, it's going to go into all over, uh, you know, uh, uh, wherever people want to carry revival. And I think that one of the, the, the things that we have to understand is I know we have a whole bunch of revivalists and we have a whole bunch of reformers. And one of the things we got to understand is they work together, they're not against each other. And, and, and we need both. And, and one of the things is this, is that uh, revive people get reformed and then reform people reform society. And, and, and I really believe that God is going to do something uh, with the next move of God that won't look the way it's looked in the past where there's like one spot and everybody comes just to that one spot. When I saw the, the, the map of the United States and, and UK and Europe, I saw thousands of small flames and they were all over and they were big, there, were, there were like many people hosting revival. It wasn't just one or two. It was the it was it was like thousands of, of people that had been lit on fire and even uh, you know my wife she's in the entertainment industry and what's funny is uh, you know when revival broke out uh, you know for the first year year and a half she laid that down some but then it just exploded and literally last year she walked runway for Vogue she was in Harper Bazaar twice Elle magazine she uh, you know she's now getting invited to some of the biggest runway shows on the planet and everywhere she goes people are getting saved they're getting healed they're getting delivered. Uh, I, I mean, major producers that uh, that are, are over some of the top brands in the world. I mean, the number one agent in, uh, in the world, I mean, listen, our president's wife, he was her agent, offered Miranda a contract. And, uh, and and what was interesting about it was that he wanted her to alter her body. And she said, I didn't alter my body. And, and, uh, and, and she totally uh, just told him, I won't do that. I believe in Jesus. All the models and all the designers saw it, you guys. And they got totally wrecked. And all of them started coming you mean we can say no? And, and we, we, don't have to, we don't have to compromise to go up the ladder. And, and see, this is what revival is going to look like when it starts to go into reformation. And we begin to carry that same fire. And what happens is uh, she's seeing where now she goes to, uh, you know, Ronaldo, the soccer player. His sister's one of the number one designers on the planet uh, and has, uh, has, has, uh, does a lot of shows. She brings Brent out and she goes to everybody there. She goes, listen, I want to you guys, introduce you guys to a prophet. She carries revival and she prophesies over all of them. And, and why am I sharing this? I, I'm sharing this because revival is onto something. We gotta transform some people, people. We, we gotta get outside of the four walls. It can't just be in here. We gotta catch fire and release fire and go. And I believe that, that if we'll embrace the promise of the Father, which is to wait until we're endued with power, he'll give you all the goods to go and do it. So that's my five-year past, five-year future. Amen. David, go ahead, bro. All right, so where we're at prophetically, how many want to know where we're at? Like, where is America at exactly? So I thought maybe five years ago, revival was going to, the big one was going to hit, right? Because I came back from the mission field. We saw some levels of revival. Eight years ago, it didn't happen. I said, Lord, why had it happened the last 10 years, the big one? Not, not talking about the little ones. And he told me, America, the, the foundation, the plumb line wasn't ready yet. After this last election, the, the Supreme Court judges, the righteous laws that are coming back into place, it's like a reversal, can sustain the move of God. Had we had a revival in the last eight years, most of us that are revivalists would have gone to jail for hosting revival, for hate speech. A lot of the 50s healing revivalists went to jail for practicing uh, healing without a license. So the Lord told me I had to wait for this last election, a, a certain level of unity in the body of Christ, certain levels of laws that are changed. Now the plumb line's in place. The ne next thing is the Lord showed me 70 years ago when Israel became a nation, the U.S. was the first nation to recognize Israel as a nation. And when, then we start getting all those 50s healing revivals. 
Then during the Six Day War, we backed up Israel. We had the Jesus Movement, which is the biggest natural kind of move of God. And in that move, more Jewish people got saved than the time of Jesus. 2008. All the ones you know now, like Sid Roth and Michael Brown. And so the Bible says you look at the fig tree. You look at Israel first. You look at the Jewish harvest to know where the Gentile harvest is at. There's more Jewish people getting saved right now in Israel and in America than ever. You talk to like Jonathan Burness or Sid Roth and they'll tell you there's been an uptick in the last couple of years. Suddenly, we've seen hundreds get saved in one meeting. Sid Roth has seen a thousand in one meeting just over and over. So we're seeing a shift in the body of Christ. So there's that seven years. Then that, then was prophesied when Billy Graham passes and old Roberts that the big one would come, that mantle would hit. So think about it. With the last election, putting the, the embassy in Jerusalem just recently, I was in D.C. at the inauguration. So I was invited to the Trump Hotel at the hour of his inauguration. And the, I didn't know why I was going to be, what I was going to do there. And when I was flying over there, the Lord told me, you're here for Israel. America will be great if America stands with Israel. That, that's part of the revival. I didn't understand it until I got there, and they said, would you please prophesy over the Israeli government that's here? All the Knesset members were there. I'm like, what? One's a rabbi. One's like, oh, man, all right. And I got up, and this is what I said. I said, I prophesy and declare that this, pres this time the USMC will be moved to Jerusalem, and as a, it'll cause a shift in the, in, the, like a, in the earth, like an earthquake. And it'll cause an awakening in America and in Israel. And I, they all start clapping, and they, were, and they were crying. The Knesset members are tearing up, and they said, "And they said we, we didn't know anyone was going to say something like that." And I said, "In Yeshua, I said Yeshua, which is Jesus." And I'm not supposed to, but they were like, "No, it's okay." And so you, you put that all together. Seventy years, we just put the embassy in Jerusalem. Any nation that does anything like that, it, it puts favor. That then the Jesus movement, all those people that are being saved, it's about to hit right now. We're right on the verge. Everything's in place. If we don't grab the opportunity right now, we can miss it. If you wait to the next two, three, four years, and the Lord told me, this is the reason why you're on the earth. There's seasons where you maintain what God's done in the past. There's seasons where you take huge steps of faith to, to launch again. Just like when you, let's say, launch a church or you, or you do a crusade or you write a book. This is the season now to take big faith steps again and go for That's why we're doing the stadium in, in January with Lou Engle because it's crazy faith steps. But the Lord said, if you don't capture it now, you could miss your Kairos moment. And we've been so used to seeing like smaller revivals like, oh, there's one over there. There's one over, that's great that we don't take the risk. We're like, well, that's good. You know, we'll go and bless it and we'll, we'll, we'll say we support it. But this is one of those seasons and usually when you're in the moment, you ask people that were in all the great revivals, they didn't realize how great the moment was till after, till years later. Jesus movement. They didn't realize how big it was when they were in the Jesus movement. They didn't realize, oh my gosh, this was it. I was in Pensacola at the Pensacola revival. I was getting blasted and I would go to Walmart. I was on the mission field. I flew to, the, to these revivals from the mission field to bring it back. And I stand in line at Walmart. And there's a whole line of people. And I say, have you guys been to the revival? The whole line, no, no, we've not been. I'm a Baptist. I'm a charismatic. I'm a, yeah, we're thinking of going. Oh, it's, I say, it's been going on for two years. Yeah, well, it's 20 minutes across town. You know, it's kind of far. I'm like, what, you guys, do you realize I flew from the mission field with all my money to get it? You guys live down the street? Yeah, we're, I'm kind of busy on my day off. I'm tired. You know, I'm like, oh, what the? And, and I realize people don't realize we're right in the moment that conditions are perfect. We're not guaranteed the next election. Nothing's guaranteed. Right, we have right now. Yeah. Harvest is ripe. People are hungry. We just, we just blessed Israel. I mean, everything, it can't get any riper than right now. And if we don't take it right now, we're going to miss it. So I feel the next five years is someone's got to go from prophesying it to actually taking a risk, putting their neck out there, risking it all again, and maybe in the past you've risked it all and you lost it all and it wasn't, you, you missed the timing. Don't let that stop you from, it's like Peter now throughout the net. Oh, we already tried that. We didn't work. We're tired. We worked all night. We, he goes, yeah, but now do it. No, I, I, we've done, we've heard that word about revival and awakening in stadiums and yeah, we tried. No, now it's different. Peter, now do it. I promise you, now do it. See what happens. All right, at your word, I'll do it. Whoa, harvest so much fish. They didn't know what to do. They had to call all the other boats, and there's a unity coming because no one ministry can pull this in. It's huge now. The old days, God allowed the man of power for the hour, the one guy, to get it started, but now it's going to be a collective, and you see collaborations the key. You see people moving in teams now to bring in the harvest. It's not a one-man show or just based on a personality, and that, well, that prophecy that was at Paul Kane prophecy years ago that said CNN and Fox is reporting, we don't know who's preaching. All we know is there's a resurrection here. There's people coming out of wheelchairs here. Everyone's getting saved. The sports... Teams are canceling their thing, but, but, but the news, the secular news starts reporting, and that's what you were saying with the Hollywood people getting saved and the entertainment. So it's all kind of 
all these realms are, are crescending into one big move. Reformation, revival, the secular, the seven mountains. They're all, it's all converging into one huge. And 2020, I believe, is the beginning of this shift. Everybody say, shift happens. Make sure you spell it correctly when you say it. All right. I don't know what else I can add to what's already been said except this. I think, I mean, it's, these guys are amazing, aren't they? Yeah. Just who they are. And I, you know, I, t I told our team, you put me on the wrong panel. You know, but, but the reality of this is this, guys, family. These prophetic words are an open invitation. And the question is, what generation is gonna say yes to it and actually take a hold of the promise and say, you know what, I'm gonna risk this thing. I'm gonna risk my ministry, I'm gonna risk my reputation, I'm gonna risk everything that I have and include my family in that process and say, you know what, we're gonna see this happen in my day. We're gonna see this happen in our day. So it's not gonna just happen, we've been talking about this, and this is what I believe where we're headed. We're, it's, we're gonna go from talking about the what to seeing the what. You know, we're gonna start not just hearing the promises and prophetic words and getting excited about it, but we're gonna get captured by these promises where we, have, we can't help but live it out. You know, and it's gonna take every single one of us collectively for us to step into what God's called us to do to see these prophetic promises come to pass. Because I could tell you this, the ark is moving, but are we? And that's the question. The ark is going from Abinadab's home into Jerusalem. We've been staying at Abinadab's home and looking at the ark and clapping and getting excited about it, but who are the ones that are following the ark into Jerusalem to see his manifested glory in the seven spheres, the seven mountains that we've been talking about? You know, a couple years ago, I was invited by this businessman. I'm not the best businessman. I just look like I am because I'm Asian. But we, we, it, was, it's, it was one of the five hot spots of revival in the world, and I had the privilege of going there five, six times a year. It's very, uh, it, it's very non-faith friendly, if you understand what I'm saying. It's in the East. And, and so I, I got there, and we're always playing chess with government and you know, the way we maneuver and everything. And one of the times I was there, I got invited by a businessman. Would you come to my corporation and bless it? Yeah, sure. So we drove one hour, two hour, three, four, five, seven hour drive to his business. Wow. And I thought I should have asked him how long it is. <laughs> um, that's one lesson learned. Um, and so we go in there, we go into his boardroom, the executives are around the boardroom, and I'm looking at the translator going, what's going on? And she says, you're gonna bless his business. I said, I could do that. And he goes up and he says, gentlemen, I brought you here today because this person was brought from America and he's gonna tell us about the future of our company, how to increase profitability, and he's gonna talk to you about the way God sees you. I looked at my translator, and I said, I'm not a prophet. She looked at me and said, you better be today. You know, she didn't say that, but she looked at me and that's what she meant. I heard it loud internally, and and I, so I prayed, I started praying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's all I could say. You know, and he says, he says, Tony, share with us. I'm like, okay, so how is everybody? You know, so one of the things I learned was I'm a master of stalling, right? And so I'm just, I'm just fishing and waiting and waiting and all of a sudden it dropped. I got a word of knowledge for this lady. I said, you've been facing, I said, excuse me, have you been in pain? And she's like, yes. And I said, are you, is it lupus? And she goes, yes. And I said, I believe Jesus wants to heal you. And so we're gonna realize in five years from now, what we do in church works out there too. You know, and, and so we prayed for her. The pain leaves instantly. And she starts weeping. And then I get this picture in my head of this weird device. And I said, can I just share with you a picture I get in my head? And they're like, yes. And so I start sharing this picture. A guy runs out, brings and opens up this blueprint and says, this is it, this is it. He says, I'm the director of the research and development department. This is it, this is it. 
And I said, I feel like God's saying, if you bring this to the forefront of your productivity and research and you develop this, this is gonna help your company profit. And all of a sudden, here, and now they're open. And I started giving prophetic words. And this is what got me. One man stands up and he comes before me and he kneels down and he's weeping. And this is what he says. He says, I've been seeking this type of wisdom all my life. And he said, and my God, Buddha, has not ever given me this type of wisdom. He didn't say power, he said wisdom. And that, and that opened up another dimension to me. And, and he said, if I believe in your God, can I have the same type of wisdom that you have? I said, if you believe in my Jesus, you could have this and much more because he's the God of wisdom. He accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. The woman who gets healed accepts Jesus as her Lord and Savior. CEOs crying, CEO wives crying. There's another lady crying. I'm saying, what are you sensing? What are you feeling? And the CEO says, I've been praying for this team for 20 years that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, that this company would be created for the glory of God. And he said, and that's the last person we are now all in the family of God. He said, we exist. Um, a year later, I meet up with him again, and he says, Tony, one product increased our profitability by $40 million. This is where I see us in five years from now. Amen. Where every person is activated. We're, we're not only operating in power, but we're operating in power and authority. Giftings release power. Authority comes by wisdom. Authority comes by wisdom. Authority comes by wisdom. Revival comes with power. Reformation comes with wisdom. And so this is where I see us going. Amen. Hey, so listen, I, I, we have time for one more question. I'm going to ask this for you, David, because uh, we're going to answer that. I need you to answer that question in three minutes, okay? And then like we're going to have I'm you guys show. pray over everyone. We've talked a lot about revival, but as Papa Che preaches, and as we've seen in places like Brownville and the Jesus People Movement, today in the church around the world, we see a lot of manifestations and power, but we see people still afraid to evangelize especially in the charismatic movement. I see people getting touched and getting rocked, but yet they don't talk to people about Jesus out in the streets after they get touched and rocked. Can you help us understand what, what that challenge is? Well, they, they need the fire. So what, what it is is a lot of revivals are like soaking, soaky, soaky. So they get the water of the Holy Spirit. So they've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but not with fire. When you have fire, you can't help everywhere you go. So the problem is they don't have the baptism of fire. They've got the Holy Spirit. They're getting filled. It's almost like therapy. They soak on the floor. Oh, it feels so good. And they can't wait for the next uh, session to soak. But in the upper room, that was just a short time. They got up and they went and evangelized the world. After a couple years of warfare, persecution, getting put in jail, they needed another wave. So they went back, Acts 4. They got another wave. Lord, now this time stretch out your hands, even if we don't touch them. Let there be signs and wonders. Boom, the place gets zapped again. Then they go back out again to the same people that are persecuting them, and now that the people fear to join them. And that's the fire drop dead for lying about the offering, but there's signs of wonders. Yeah. And it says, Acts 2, so I think we're going from what you're saying, that's an Acts 2 model. Even Toronto is good, but it's still Acts 2. It's upper room, and then it's Acts 4. So Acts 2 people are added to the church. Naturally, and when there's a renewal, people still want to come to church. Unsaved will come. But when you hit Acts 4, it says now the number of, of souls had multiplied. Right after Acts 4, it goes to multiplication. The greater the glory, the greater the soul winning. So at this next move, like that's why we're doing the stadiums. It's out in the streets. It, it's preceded by street evangelism. So it's fire with glory going out. That's the next move. So what the move you're talking about is people getting renewed, Father's love, healed from religious spirits. That's why they're not going out. They themselves are still, you know. But, but now they have to get up off the floor and go to the next one where, because <laughs> they're just on the floor the whole time. And then they get the fire. I had people sleeping in my meetings one time, snoring, and they go, I feel so renewed in your meeting. I said, because you slept the whole time. I mean, that's, that's called the, the renewal. I, I renewed. I didn't sleep at home. I come here to sleep. But, but I said, no, dude, we're going to, one time I was in a church and I, I feel like they were all just like soaky, soaky. I said, we're going to go right now. It was a big church in Phoenix. It was like a million dollar, multi-million dollar church. I said, we're going to go right now outside and do this outside. They're like freaked out. I just shoved them outside 
because it's like they were too, too comfortable. So right now we're all gonna hit the streets in the next five minutes. No, I'm kidding. All right. But but I. But does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Why don't we stand? Why don't you guys stand up? We have five minutes left in this session. I'm going to just turn these guys loose and let them pray for you. I, have, I, I don't know about you, but I've experienced Acts 2. I want more. Amen? How many guys are wanting more? Amen? And if you need Acts 2, we're here to have Acts 2 as well. But I want to see revival and evangelism and reformation. So go for it, man. Just start praying. Yeah, just lift up your hands. Lord, we thank you today. Father, for a fresh baptism of fire, we come before you, Lord, and we pray, send a, a fresh fire upon us, Lord Jesus, and we ask you, Lord, burn out everything that would hinder the full glory of God, anything that would hinder the full manifestation of Jesus in us and through us. Let the fire of God burn in a new and fresh way. And Father, I pray for a visitation of the glory of God in the secret place. I just, I just declare right now, I prophesy over you that there is coming a fresh visitation of God's glory in your secret place. There is a new wind of the Holy Spirit about to come upon you. And even in this place today, the Lord says, I have gathered you here to release a fresh wind of God upon you that will take the spark, the fire that is within you and breathe upon it in a new way and in a fresh way, says the Lord. Lord, let's just let the fire of the glory and awakening come on people. Just raise your hand and just pull on it. There's a cloud here. Father, we lift our hands to you. We're desperate for you. And we pull on that cloud of glory. Lord, we receive an impartation for this next great awakening, the spirit of fire, the spirit of evangelism, the spirit of purity, the spirit of holiness. Father God, we supernatural wisdom, revelation, knowledge. Lord, we receive the fullness of your glory right now. We receive that which we're talking about. We receive it. Just say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Use me. Fill me. Visit me. Oh God, I'm desperate for you, God. I'm desperate for more of you, Jesus. Just cry out to the Lord. And Lord, we just release awakening, glory, harvest. Amen. And God, even as leaders in a movement, I pray that you would reignite first love within our hearts, God. That we would fall in love with you all over again like it's the first time, God. That you would just baptize us with the fire of your love right now. Lord, that you would reignite a love awakening, a love revolution, God, that would cause us to go out to represent and to demonstrate and declare the love of God, of the Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit and I pray Lord that you would break apathy that you would break passivity off us right now in Jesus name by this fresh baptism Lord I pray and I declare God a, a, a new boldness to arise God that courage would be released like never before to for faith to be released like never before right now so Lord continue to burn call us burning ones God release the spirit of burning in Jesus name come on just just put your hands up real quick. Listen, I feel that even the Holy Spirit reminded me about that angel named Promise. Listen, God wants to release the promise of revival in your church. He wants to release the promise of revival in your community, your business, wherever you go. And I wanna just release that anointing, the promise of the Father being released, that he would baptize us onto power, but also to be witnesses, you guys. Listen, souls are gonna come into the kingdom like never before, and God is gonna release creativity, he's gonna release uh, miracles, he's gonna release authority, he's gonna release uh, his kingdom. And, and, and so listen, I believe there's a release of dunamis power right now. So, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that, Lord, today you're releasing, Lord God, a baptism of fire, God, that, Lord, the promise of the Father would be released across this nation, Lord, across the nations of the earth. And, Lord, we say stir these people up, stir our hearts, God, to know you more. And, Lord, I pray right now that you would release moves of God in people's churches, in their cities, in their homes, God. Lord, let the fire begin to spread, God, all over the earth. And Lord, we pray right now for an infectious love for Jesus, that God, you would cause our hearts to burn for intimacy with you, that you would cause us to burn, to know you more, that we can make you known all over the earth. And everybody said, Amen. come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap and a shout right now.